<laughs> he can laugh now, but there was nothing funny about the danger inside the burning home. Zero visibility and no chance to climb out normally. There was no time to try to do that. Just had to come out at first. That was the way to do it. It wasn't captured on camera, but Captain Kevin Fitzhenry had to exit using the same risky maneuver. Hey guys, welcome back to Transmit the 1075. I hope all of you guys have been enjoying my channel and I ask that you please dig into my channel and the, and the content that I have on there. I've been doing a bunch of crit critiques, uh, some ride-alongs, some old jobs that I've taken in, some fire buffing. But today I wanna to discuss, um, this is one of those other things that sort of uh, I've been thinking about much of my career and I wanted to throw this past you guys. Um, so. I am not suggesting for one moment the bailout system, these, these bailout systems that we now have. We shouldn't use them. Um, but I want to talk about it and see what everyone's other opinions are out there and what you ultimately think. Um, let me start off by saying that I don't particularly like carrying it and wearing the bailout device. Um, I had a Petzl one uh, with a 50-foot uh, rope. You know, it wasn't the heaviest thing, but it was probably, I don't know how much those things weigh, six, seven pounds, 10 pounds, I'm not sure. Maybe a little less, I'm sure somebody here will tell, tell us. Uh, but I found it to be bulky at times. I found it to be annoying much of the time. I also found it to be um, an imbalance. Most of the stuff that we carry tends to be on your whole body, whereas these are on one side, and I always felt like it was just a little bit um, putting my, my body off balance but the bigger thing was the annoyance of it bumping into things uh, on occasion i will drive the apparatus as the chauffeur with my bunker pants on i didn't always do that but when it was cold uh when it was snowing if we were going to a fire um if we were going to a pin job i always like to have my turnout gear on so that when i got on the scene i wasn't um wasting time uh there but but when you try to sh sit in the sh chauffeur's seat it's it doesn't fit with this big uh you know this big thing on your hip anyway i just wanted to go through a bunch of different things here and let and let me know what you think okay so the first thing i wanted to bring up was the odds of actually having to use it my guess is that thankfully this is not a very common occurrence um i i don't think i don't recall in my career uh you know i i was on the job or a volunteer or all these different things over about 32 years. I don't recall ever um, being in an incident where someone uh, jumped out the window. Uh, so that's a good thing. But I, again, I don't, I, not that I was in the busiest department ever or worked in the busiest area of New Jersey, but, but we were busy and I've seen things and I've been around. I don't ever recall seeing that situation. So that's the first thing. But the bigger thing I would add to that is although these occurrences happen, and at a low rate, I wonder sometimes what the chances and the ability to use the device in the first place. My sort of gut feeling about the whole thing is that 
These are decisions that are made in a very, very brief moment in time. And I would argue in most cases that the ability to actually operate the device, first of all, particularly at the window is one thing, but this idea of going across the room or tying off somewhere else, I think is slim to zero. But even just at the window, my guess in most cases, it's a moment decision in which people are going out the window and they don't give a shit how or why. And the idea of, again, we trained every, every year on these things. We did our 10 bailouts every year. We follow the guidelines. But still, at, at some point, it, you sort of forget or with gloves on, it's hard to find it, to open the pocket, to pull it out. It's, it's not the most, uh, the easiest thing to operate in a moment of panic. And uh, by the way, I'm sure all the things I'm saying, I'm, as technology has changed and different models and different manufacturers and different methodologies, but in general terms, I think this still, this still fits. So, so that's one point. Speaking of odds, I, um, again, I, I haven't seen a lot of this used in real world situations. So I went online, um, I searched through every manufacturer um, again, you'll see that manufacturers that are, are fire um, equipment sellers are you know, sell these different devices. So I went on these these websites that sell all different types of firefighter equipment and didn't see any articles or videos or things sort of boasting about how many lives it saved. I also went on the the manufacturer the actual manufacturer of the device. And again, you would think normally, I thought there might be a video here or there where they showed that one time where, you know, for marketing purposes, where that one time this device has worked, where guys have used the bailout and saved lives and it's on video or there's an article. And through my Google search, and please guys, share anything people have. I'm a pretty good, uh, I know how to use the internet pretty well. I could not find anything other than one article, which I have here uh, that I'll show, that showed some uh, a department using it. It was sort of a little bit unusual. I think they used it, but they also used it for a civilian. I don't know exactly what the scenario was, and I'm not even convinced. I mean, maybe they could have actually just gone out the window anyway or gone with a ladder. They, they used the bailout because it was an option, but had that not been an option, could they have done something else? I don't know. Um, but ironically, in my searching for trying to find a, uh, a video or an article where the bailout devices were used and saved lives, what I kept coming across were articles where people are being injured by training. So this is the one thing I wanna, I wanna bring up here. And again, I, I'm not bashing these things necessarily, but I'm just, sometimes you have an idea that something is a great idea and it turns out maybe that it isn't. Um, think about this. If, um, I don't know how many firefighters across the nation have these devices. At my department, we were required to be bailout tested uh, once a year and we would do 10 jumps. Some of those jumps would be blindfolded, uh, one would be tying off, one would be using the window and so forth. And I have to be honest with you, I have knowledge of, of an incident, it didn't occur at my department, but I know of an incident in New Jersey where guys went out the window and there was uh, an issue with the bailout as well as their safety device uh their secondary um uh device and they fell and i think this guy this firefighter broke his leg broke his arm he was injured anyway i i have seen several articles across the country of people being injured and those of course are the ones that have been reported so if we look at it this way if jumping out a window is a very very low occurrence um, so I don't know what it is, one in a million, one in 500,000, whatever the case is. Um, if these things are low occurrence, but every single year, tens of thousands of firefighters are doing 10 jumps per year and injuring themselves, are we actually hurting more firefighters training with these devices than, than, um, than not training with them? And again, are most departments could you have just could you just jump out the first floor could you hang from the second you start getting to the third and fourth and fifth floor so obviously that becomes a different scenario and that's another point i wanted to make you know maybe these things are more realistic in departments with three four five story buildings than most of america dealing with 
single family dwellings, one and two stories where dropping from a window isn't so bad. I, I mean that in the in the uh, the easiest of terms, but you know, isn't as bad as jumping from a a five story tenement building in New York City. Anyway, these are if anyone has um, I couldn't find any of these articles of lives being saved with the bailout, or at least more than one or so. Um, if you know of videos, if you know of articles, if you have personal experience, please share because I don't want to dissuade people from using these things if if I'm wrong, because I could be wrong. But it, I, I'm starting to wonder whether or not um, all the training and, and one other thing I'll add is the amount of money being spent. You know, these devices, if it depends on the situation, but I know if they've been used in a real situation, they're not supposed to be used, if they're damaged, if there's if there's fraying on the um, on the rope, there's all these reasons. Even I think there's even a time limit, or five years, or ten years, or whatever it is, the device has to be replaced. So this there's a significant amount of money being spent uh, for these devices, and ultimately, if money could be spent somewhere else, right? So even if it is working, even if there's that one in a million or one a year or whatever the whatever it is. Is it theoretically possible that spending this money in training on other things like, um, you know, maybe stretching the line faster and getting into position and doing better basic firefighter skills to alleviate the chances of of these situations or even ladder companies um, placing, you know, our company did a pretty good job of this, I will say, is at any fire putting ladders to windows when you don't think you don't even need them. Right, so having a ladder there positioned on 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 at least a several sides of the building, um, so that in the unlikely event of an emergency, the ladder is there. Um, it a ladder can be used a little bit faster, I would think. Anyway, these are just thoughts in my head. If anyone has any other suggestions, by all means, um, add your two cents. That's all I have for you today. Thanks for visiting my channel. Please like and subscribe. And please, like I said, I have some videos at the end that you can click on next and watch, but uh, some FDNY stuff from the 90s when I was just a young punk uh, doing ride-alongs. I uh, have some fire critiques, some, even some fire buffing in the, in, uh, the not-so-distant dis past, past, and I plan on doing some more in the future. So please join the channel and see you at the next one.